we are going to test for first or second order kinetics to see if we can obtain either a first order rate law or a second order rate law for this particular equation. And again, we've got some data. In this case, we've collected pressure changes versus time. And since I know the outcome, I'm going to test for first order initially. And remember, I'm testing to see is the natural log of the pressure versus time going to be linear. So when I use the graphing calculator to do that, I've got to plug in uh, data. So if I'm going to test for first order, I'm going to hit the stat key and edit. We can clear out these lists, clear and arrow back down. Go over to that, clear, arrow down. So I'm going to enter in these times. You always have to enter in the zero. 5, 10, 15, and 20. Now test for data. I'm going to enter in these values first, and then I'm going to take the natural log. Instead of hitting the natural log of each point, I'm going to plug in the values, 0 0.1, 0 0.017, 0 0.009, 0 0.0062, and 0 0.0047. Four, seven. Now I'm going to take the natural log of all of those. So if I go up to L2 and I hit the natural log button, I'm testing for first order, so that's the LN of the data, and I've got to tell this to take the natural log of L2. So I'm going to hit the blue button, hit L2, and it will automatically do that for me for all data points. Then if I do stat, calculate, and I test for first order kinetics to see if it's linear. I enter 4, and I get a lousy r squared value. So when I try first order, I get an r squared value of 0.85. And well, that might be a good test score. That's a very lousy score for linear data. So I don't necessarily know that it is second order. Um, these are, again, the most uh, special cases where first order is the easiest mathematically and second order is the next easiest. So with, if we do have first or second order, then we can obtain those instantaneous equations. So to try for second order, I'll just go, I wonder if I can go back to my list, uh, stat, to edit, and if I take E with each one of these just to get back to my original data, I've got to do L2 again. So now I'm back at my original data, and then I'm going to hit the X to the minus 1 key. So the reciprocal X to the minus 1 means I'm going to be taking 1 over each one of these data points. So, oops, did I do that already? Oh, yeah. Nope. Now let's see. I got it. All right, I hit X to the minus one. Well, see, I might have to enter all those in. I, I must have messed up. Okay. So it doesn't like that. Oops. Uh, stat, edit. I'm just going to clear all that. Arrow back down. So I guess I'll have to enter these values in one at a time. So I'm going to hit the x to the minus 1 key after each value, 0 0.1, 0 0.017, 0 0.009, 0 0.0062, and 0 0.0047. So each one of those data points, I had to take the reciprocal of those. And now I will go to stat, calculate, and again, um, item 4 which is the linear regression, and enter that, and I do get a good R-squared value. So when I tested for second order, I got R-squared equal to 0.9999, which is fantastic. And so I know that my equation of the line, y equals ax plus b, is linear. That's what I was testing for. And now I've got to look at the calculator to get the value for the slope A. So here, A is equal to 10.16.
So I know that my rate law is rate equals, and instead of writing k, I'm going to write the 10.16, and this will be NO2 squared. Technically, since we had our data given in pressures, I should write the pressure squared of NO2. But either way, that's going to work. We can also calculate a half-life if we were interested in doing so. And since, just to remind us, second order means 1 over the pressure of NO2 versus time gave us a linear relationship with the equation y equals ax plus b. And in this case, the instantaneous rate law, 1 over the concentration, is positive kT plus 1 over the initial concentration. This is why this fits the linear equation y equals mx plus b, our calculator, instead of representing the slope as an m, represents the slope with a lowercase a. Since we do have linear data, that means we can write the rate law. And that also means we could solve for the half-life. So t1 half is 1 over the initial concentration times k. So that would be 1 over the initial concentration was 0.1. And then if I multiply that by 10.16, I believe I'm going to get the value of 1, approximately. So let's clear that. So 1 divided by 0.1 divided by 10.16, and that gives me 0.984. So our half-life would be 0.9, and this would be minutes. And if we look at that, what does that make sense? Oh, 0.9 minutes. No, that's not very far. So 0.9 is somewhere in here. And when half of our initial concentration is gone, that would mean we had 0.05 uh, atmospheres remaining. And so uh, this is about 20% of that. So that would make sense according to the graph. If we just double check to see if that half-life made sense.